why do we have so many options for saxophone mouthpieces? Surely by now there must be one mouthpiece that is clearly the best and everyone should just play that, right? No, it doesn't work that way. So I'm going to explain to you why so many mouthpiece designs exist, why new ones are still being created, and how the different elements function together to create each individual sound. Starting with this part right here, the baffle. Now don't be baffled. The word baffle also means a device to deflect or regulate flow, in this case, of air. This is the part of the mouthpiece anatomy that has the biggest impact since it's the first thing that the airstream hits. We've got three main types of baffles, the flat baffle, the rollover baffle, and the step baffle. The first mouthpiece you ever played on probably had a flat baffle in it. This is what we find in beginner stock mouthpieces as well as classical style mouthpieces. This type of baffle is not deflecting the air, it's just letting it flow straight through, resulting in a round sound with little to no edge in it. Have a listen to what a flat baffle mouthpiece can sound like. Some popular examples of flat baffle mouthpieces include the Yamaha 4C, Selmer C-Star, as well as Soloist mouthpieces, and also Yanaga Sawa hard rubber stock mouthpieces. In the early days, pretty much all mouthpieces were flat baffle design, which suited the styles of music being played at the time very well. But with the evolution of music, there was also an evolution in the saxophone sound. The rollover baffle came about with the development of jazz, and this is the design that can typically be found in the mouthpieces of the great jazz players from the 40s all the way up till today. This baffle design adds a bump which deflects the air, creating a more powerful and edgier sound. It is a meticulous process to create a good rollover baffle as the most minute changes can have a significant impact on how that air flows through the mouthpiece and therefore the sound it produces. There is a whole world of possibilities from low to high rollover baffle designs, but in general, the more of a bump that is in that mouthpiece, the more power and edge it can produce. However, there are limitations, of course, in what can be accomplished, making this a delicate balancing act. Here are a few examples of what a good rollover baffle mouthpiece can sound like. Some classic examples of rollover baffle style mouthpieces include Autolink Super Tone Masters and New York Myers. Finally, we have the step baffle, which is a more significant deflection of the airflow. As you can see, the step baffle kind of looks like a step. It's flat and then drops off. Think of it like a wedge put in the beginning of the mouthpiece to speed up the airflow and therefore create even more power and edge than a rollover baffle does. This type of baffle developed as music became amplified and saxophone players found themselves in much louder acoustic situations. The benefit of a step baffle mouthpiece is that it helps you cut through the mix of an electrified band more easily, but the drawback is that it is not well suited to playing with a warm sound or at low dynamic levels. Some classic examples of step baffle mouthpieces include the Ducroft Super Power Chamber and the Gardella Studio. Modern examples currently in production include the Jody Jazz Superjet and the Theo Wane Durga. The new better sax Vernon mouthpiece for alto and now tenor saxophone has a rollover baffle which provides a nice amount of edge as well as projection so that it can be easily used in more contemporary playing styles like rock and funk while still giving you access to that classic 
1960s jazz sound. These days, saxophone players often find themselves having to go back and forth between these two types of sounds, often during the same gig. So having one mouthpiece that can handle everything we need to do is ideal. Now to the mouthpiece chamber. This is the part of the mouthpiece in between where the baffle ends and the saxophone neck begins. In the early days, pretty much all mouthpieces had large chambers, which provide a fat and spread out sound. Over time, mouthpiece designs started adopting medium and smaller chamber designs to give mouthpieces more focus. Now, the chamber is not as important as the baffle is, since by the time the air gets here, it's already been heavily influenced by the baffle. But in general, a smaller chamber on one hand can produce a brighter sound. However, if it gets combined with a flat baffle, you'll get a dark, round, yet focused sound. Like with the very popular classical mouthpiece, the Summer Sea Star. On the other hand, a larger chamber can result in a dark, rounded and not so powerful sound. However, if that gets combined with a steep rollover or even step baffle, the chamber can balance out the brightness that baffle design produces. So it's really important to keep in mind that yes, baffle design and chamber do matter on their own, but it's really how they work in combination with one another that creates the overall sound. The larger chamber design of the Better Sags Burn-In mouthpiece, for example, balances out the relatively steep rollover baffle it has, which gives the player access to a warmer sound and some lower dynamic levels. For me, the ideal mouthpiece is going to allow me to easily play at all dynamic levels with a wide spectrum of tonal colors across the full range of the instrument. Tip opening is likely the characteristic of your mouthpiece you are most familiar with. Most people know what tip opening they play, even if they don't know what type of baffle or chamber they have. The big picture is this. The larger the tip opening, the more air you can put through the mouthpiece. This can result in a bigger sound, but it can be harder to control and play in tune. Smaller tip opening mouthpieces are easier to blow and play in tune, with with the drawback of having a lower ceiling on projection. Beginners and those who are looking for a very pure sound like classical saxophonists will want to stick with the smaller tip openings like threes and fours. As your embouchure strength develops, those who want to play more popular styles of music like jazz, rock, funk, pop music are going to want to move up to more medium tip openings like five, sixes, and sevens. Now it can be tricky to choose the exact right tip opening for you, so the next video you should watch is this one where I explain everything you could possibly ever want to know about saxophone, mouthpiece, tip openings, and how to choose the best one for you.